Man, how many uh, want to raise your hand? We're victorious, right? Amen. Amen. How many need to be reminded that we're victorious in every situation? Amen. And the enemy will constantly, constantly tell you that you're the loser. Amen. What do you believe in that stuff for? What do you, what, what do you fear for? You know, he just throw fear on us and doubt and all that stuff. That's what he does. But it's really good to be reminded constantly uh, of what we're, what we're here for. Today, uh, I'm going to be talking about why we need the Holy Spirit. We're going to be in John chapter 20. And this continuing on our series on the Holy Spirit. And we're going to get into Acts and all that stuff uh, here in the next couple weeks also. And I don't know how long. Like we're just going to do three sermons, two more sermons, or three more sermons. But there's so much to know and be reminded of how Jesus didn't want us to leave, be by ourselves in this world. He wanted us to have uh, somebody to help us and come alongside of us. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, reminds us how we are victorious. I like that angel's a great example. Uh, I don't like watching, I do like watching the fights, but I just never figure out when the channel are on. So, um, anyways, it's good. We're, we are victorious, and we can walk around like that, amen? And uh, even when our world is crashing around us, we still can have peace, because Jesus said again, peace I give you, amen? Let's go and talk about that. Let's go to Acts, I mean, I'm sorry, John chapter 20, and I'm going to be reading verse 19. Through 22, 23, and then we're going to break it down and talk about it. And hopefully, when you leave here today, you'll be encouraged because with you is this amazing mission that the Holy Spirit will help you to accomplish. Amen? Let's look at this. Uh, verse 19, if you have your Bibles. Come on. Page 996. All right. Look up here when you got it. So I know you got it. There you go. Everybody's got it. Very good. Okay. Verse 19. It says, On the evening of the first day of the week, when disciples were together, when the doors were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive any one his sins, they will be forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Let's pray. Father, I am so humbled to be able to stand here this morning and share your word. I ask God that you use it to glorify your son. As Jesus on the road to Emmaus began to share each story, Lord, revelation and truth and their minds were open. God, I pray you open our minds to what the Spirit has to say this morning. I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 So here's the story. We, we see um, in this, uh, what happened. Jesus was crucified. He was put in the grave. He was denied by the disciples. They were scattering all over Jerusalem because of fear that they may be arrested and be crucified. Right? They lived in fear for those days. And then on the third day, uh, we see that Jesus rose from the grave and then was seen by Mary. If you look at the first part of, of, of chapter 20, uh, he said, don't touch me, I'm going to my father. But then he appeared to his disciples. His disciples met, uh, we know somewhere in the temple area, in this room, they was locked, they were, they were fearful for their lives, they were, they were concerned about what might happen. And all of a sudden, the, the person, Jesus, the man, Jesus, that they saw arrested, be uh, mocked, crucified, crucified, was now standing before them. And we'll see in other chapters, we'll see, and I'll we'll go through them just a, a quickly in a little bit, we'll see that Thomas doubted, that's why he says here, John records that, he showed him his hands and his side, I am he, and they're like, all of a sudden again, they believe, just like they did earlier, that he was the Son of God. So it's kind of interesting, we go through the same process. We believe Jesus is the Son of God, and then tragedy happens, and then we have to be reminded that Jesus is the Son of God. 
right? And that's what happened here too. It's just like we do go through the same process all the time uh, in our own everyday lives. Something happens that rocks our world, our, our, what we think we can handle or control, and then all of a sudden we got to be reminded again that Jesus is my God. And I think that's what happened here. They were like, yes, you are He, you are Him. And, he, and great joy came. And then He said to them, peace be with you again. So he said, Pete, calm down, guys, everything's cool. And he said, peace with peace with you. And I want to explain to you this peace be with you today because this is um, something that's kind of what Andy said about being victorious. Right? This peace is more than just the peace that we say in the world. Calm down, everything's cool, relax, right? This peace is a little bit different. This peace has a lot of connotation to it that, that gives us the victory at the end. This peace is saying, listen, Peace because you already won. And I'll share with that in a second. I said, um, this was, I, I looked this up, and you know, when you look up the dictionary or in the definition, anybody, everybody, anybody ever used a website called blueletterbible.org? Uh, mm -hmm. Write that down. Yes, that's where I learned it from these guys when we were in college. And he says, hey, this is a cool website, check this out. Blueletterbible.com. I thought there's no, I, I, I'm not, I was thinking, sitting in the office reviewing this this morning, I go, I have this information, and as a pastor, I'm going to keep this information to myself. That way I can make myself sound better than everybody else, but it's really not true. Right? I want everybody to know everything that I know, and even more, because the information that you can find about when you're studying the Bible is, 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 um, is uh, for everybody, and the Holy Spirit is revelation of what that understanding is, right? So when you talk, look up this word peace, if you, if you, if you, um, you type in uh, John 20, 21, and then it'll give you this uh, the verses, and then have a, a little click, a little a box next to it says tools. You click on that, and it'll give you the strong concordance reference and all the rest of the references to that. It's really nice. It's really easy. And it's it's formidable. It, it's formidable. So the last part of it says peace. It's talking about Christianity. Of Christianity, the tranquil state of the soul, assurance of its salvation, peace in your soul, you'll know of your salvation. I know, I'm saved, right? I got saved. I got saved January 20. I got the date, the time, I got it all out. I know now that I'm continually being saved, right? We're continually, we're working on our salvation. We're continually being saved. And we know that there's a prize at the end. And we'll be with Jesus, right? When it's all over and done. Yeah. And that we'll, we'll have our full salvation. So we have tranquility, peace in our hearts now because we know of our salvation. Amen. Don't smile now. You know that's good, right? I know I'm saved. I know everything's going to be good. I don't know what happens in this world. It's going to be good. I, and that same peace is the same peace that not only happens for us Americans and the people that live here, but the peace that happens is for the whole world. And all the people and all the Christians that are going through all the stuff that's going to happen in the world today, which we you know is a horrific thing, there's still that same peace. They know their salvation. They know their hope. And they can go through that. Amen? I just thought I'd bring that up again because everything that was happening. Uh, it says, through Jesus, the salvation through Jesus. And so fearing nothing from God and, um, and being content with it, it's our earthly uh, lot, being content with what we have done in this earth, or have to do in this earth, and whatsoever sort there is, the blessing state of devote and upright men after death. So it's just saying that in this world right now, we can have peace while we're here, and then we know we'll have the salvation is full when we when we get when we get to be with Jesus. So in that time, that's what peace does. Plus, besides all the other things, another part of the peace it says we should have sec security, safety, prosperity, fidelity because of the harmony we have with Him. Peace, continuous peace. Um, I mean, I can't even describe peace. How can you describe the peace that comes with God when it comes over you when you're in a situation you can't control and also the presence of God? The Holy Spirit comes on you, or however you want to describe it, and then you just say, okay, well, that's all going to be fine, right? No matter what the outcome is going to be in that situation, you have peace in it. That's the peace that Jesus said to his disciples, and that's the peace he wants for you. It's, and I, uh, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24, Last week it was joy, full, complete joy and peace, and now this week we're going to talk about peace and a few other things here, and winning the prize. So, 
1 Corinthians. Nine twenty four. Or yeah, do do you not know that in a race all the runners uh, run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. This was so cool. I wanted to get some uh, some uh, what do you call them? Medals. Some medals for everybody today because we already won, right? So you you before you even run the race. Listen to me, before you even run the race, you already got the prize. You already got the medal. I seen uh, Stephen Fees, he's uh, uh, doing a church plant on the west side of Madison. I love him, him and his wife Megan, they're having their first baby soon. And anyway, he ran the half marathon last week and he got the big medal, so on Facebook he posted his medal. You know, he won his medal because he ran, whatever, was that 13 miles or something like that? Yeah, 13 miles, that's, that's a long time ago since I did that, but anyway. 13 months, so right. I'm thinking this, that, that example came to me this morning is that he, had, he held his prize, but we already have the prize. The day that you believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that day when you said yes to him, when you surrendered your will to his will, when you said that I'm going to follow Jesus, I'm being baptized because I want the whole world to know who I am in God, right? That day you got the prize. Amen? And now we just have to run. We're, we're going to run it out. We're already winners. You're a winner. I'm a winner. We're all already winners in this thing. It's like, man, this Christian life is so hard. Yeah, okay, fine. But guess what? You already have your hand raised. We're going to cross the finish line. Guess what? You already won. Right? Because of what Jesus did. Because all you did was simply believe that he was who he said he was. Amen? He is the Son of God. Let's go back to John. We'll stay there for a while now. He said, peace be with you. He's telling the disciple, he's about to tell him something that's really significant here in the next uh, little verse, or in the left, next part of that verse. It says, as the Father has sent me. And I just want to remind you uh, this morning, what did the Father send Jesus to do? The Father sent Jesus to redeem all of mankind. He paid the ultimate price, the perfect sacrifice, so no longer do we have the sacrificial system need to be done. No longer do we have to earn salvation. Amen. Some of us still think we have to earn our salvation, but we don't have to. That's from not from God. God, you already have your salvation. And then when we sin or we do something wrong, then we need to repent and ask God to forgive us of that. But you already have your salvation. Amen. Come on. Amen. Right? Yes. You have your salvation when you believe. I believe. I believe. And he says here. He said, as the Father has sent me, then he says, I am sending you. Jesus had a mission to redeem mankind. He healed people. He loved on people. He, 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 uh, he stood for righteousness when it was when in, in front of the religious people. He did all the right things. He loved. He loved. He loved. He loved. And now God is, Jesus saying here to them, he says, and I want to camp out here for just a little while, I am sending you. So when he said that, he said that because there's a mission, there's something that has to be done. So let's turn over, there's, I'm going to go through uh, Matthew and Mark and Luke, and we'll look at the end of each one of those Gospels there and see what Jesus said. They all write it a little bit differently, but it's the same mission. And I want to remind us today that when Jesus said this to the disciples, he also said it to you and me, right? He said, this is your mission. You have something to do. So Jesus had a mission to do. And now we have a mission to do. Amen? Jesus was to save the world, and ours was to tell people about what Jesus did. Right? Isn't that ultimately what we do? Jesus did it, and there's nothing we can do to save people. Right? There's nothing that we can do to save people besides opening our mouths. Or sharing love, or sharing kindness, drawing people through a Thanksgiving dinner, and sharing, you know, some turkey in our history, and then sharing Jesus with them. Amen? And then bring them to a Christmas thing. And they're curious about Christmas. And that's fine. Internationals want to know about that. So fine. Let's tell them. Let's sing some Christmas songs. Let's tell them why we celebrate Christmas. I don't really agree with the whole Christmas thing. Okay? I see most of us don't. But that's all right. We just, this time of year, we'll use it for God's glory. Amen? Amen. Right? We're not going to get all religious about it. We're not going to say Jesus really wasn't born on December. Who cares about all that? What we're going to do is, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going to say who cares about that. I'm just saying... 
we know the truth, but this is what the world has right now, so let's use it, right? So we'll bring up, gather a bunch of people, I think we had 90 last year, right? 90 internationals came here for the Christmas thing. And afterwards we had cookies, I think Crystal made hundreds of cookies, and uh, hot chocolate and coffee and tea, and we went downstairs and we just talked to the people, got to know them. Out of that, we have one family now that Andy and Rachel are friends with, that, have, uh, that are still curious about Jesus. And they went been to dance classes together, they walk together, they go to market together, they go to movies together, they do all sorts of things together. So in everyday aspect of life, they're getting to know this too, and hopefully the end result will be for them to know Jesus and surrender their lives to Jesus. It would be amazing, it would be a miracle, man. We've got two um, wonderful people, um, research scientists, I mean, they've been around the world, and now they're here in Madison, Wisconsin, and God put them here. Right at the right time when Andy and Rachel when he came here just to follow up with them and love on them and see them come to know Jesus. That's what our mission is. But let's look at Matthew 28. And this is something that we shared many times as our mission for our church. So I wanted to start there. Matthew 28. This is our mission. He says if Jesus came to do something, and now we have something to do. Matthew 28, right at the end of the chat, uh, at the end of the chapter, it says, and my Bible still says the Great Commission, right? Or Right? That's what it says in my Bible. But anyway, it's verse 11, I mean, verse 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. This was, of course, after his resurrection, the same time John, John reports. This is Jesus, this is Matthew's, you know, interpretation of what happened. So he wrote this down as the Holy Spirit led him. And then it says, When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. That's the whole sermon itself. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always until the end of the age. So here Matthew records exactly what happened, the mission that the disciples were given. I believe the same mission as given to us, that we are to make disciples, as we do, uh, in our church, we changed to a little bit of uh, emphasis on that, that we're going to help each person grow in their relationship with Jesus. If you are the perfect Christian and you know everything about the Bible and you can quote it and you're walking it with God and you're, I still think there's room to grow. Amen? If we're just starting off in this thing and you're trying to learn things and we're, we're, we're going to help you grow in that. Amen? That's called making disciples. It's like we're, make, we're helping you grow in Jesus. We're helping you to mature, if you will, into a, a, a relationship with God that will help us do what he told us to do. Amen? We're maturing him. And a lot of us say, well, I'm already mature. I know everything. I'm like, you can't tell me. No, I'm not. So he takes a position of humility to say, I'm going to learn. Right? If, I, if you're teachable, then I can help you grow in God. If you're not, if you know everything, then I'm just going to love on you anyway, right? So, but we are. We're going to mature in God, and we can, uh, and that's what God told us to do. And then we can see us grow as we do what He told us to do here, making disciples. So who's responsible for making disciples? I'll answer that question. I know perhaps we've asked that question, but it's like it's not really one to answer. But the, really, the, who is responsible for making to disciple people? Everyone. Everyone. And we have, over the years of the church, have made the pastor and the associate pastor and whoever else can be in the, in the leadership team, they're <coughs> responsible to make their disciples. But we all are responsible. This mission was to every one of us, right? And then who can baptize people? This is really good, because in when I grew up, it was only the priest, it was only the pastor, it was only those. But now when we baptize people here, like we had uh, let people, Lord, Tina baptized people. And I don't, you know, Rachel can baptize, and you can baptize people, right? Why not? Because what you're doing is real. Uh, this, does this blow your mind a little bit? I mean, it's, it takes a religious thing up. We're, we're all commissioned to make disciples, and why can't we baptize them? You lead your friend to Jesus at a picnic, and there's water right there. Hey, do you want to get baptized? Yes, go baptize them. You might not get a baptismal certificate or something or whatever. It doesn't matter. Oh, look at me. I'm trying to mess up some of your heads a little bit, right? It's not about the religion. It's about people growing in relationship with Jesus. And we take off all our religious beliefs and say, I've been taught all this stuff. All my, this is the hardest thing for me. I've been taught so many things over my history. And I'm realizing this is the gospel right here. Teaching people to grow in Jesus. Amen? And say, well, you, Cindy, can do it just... And do this just as good as anybody else in here. 
Well, she's only 12, 15, 13. Thank you. I don't want to mess that up. Right? So Cindy's 13 years old. What if Cindy was uh, at her ballet class and everybody's asking her about Jesus and all of a sudden Cindy begins to share Jesus with them and they all get saved. They say, yeah, I want to follow Jesus like you do. How amazing would that be? Oh, Cindy, you can't do nothing. No, you're not, you're not mature enough. You know, so you have to let your pastor do it. And you have to let Pastor Andy to help you with that. You know, and then we have to go through all these classes and teach your, all those girls about how they should follow you. No. They followed Jesus because Cindy was a witness. Amen. And so why not? Do what this says right here. This is our mission. We're commissioned. Jesus said this. This is what you're supposed to do. Amen? Yes. Say amen. That means let it be so. Amen. Let it, we're going to do this. This is what Jesus said. Now let's look, at, um, let's look at Mark 16. This is a fun one. Mark 16. Mark being the youngest of the disciples and our you know, follower of Jesus. And so he wrote this book, and, and, and we'll get into it later. But anyway, um, some Bibles it says this isn't in their Bible. Some Bibles says it does, but in the oldest transcripts, this is there. So look at verse 15. This is Jesus, again, he's recording the same time frame where Jesus was resurrected now. He was revealed himself to disciples in, the, in that room. And then Mark records this. He says, he's, in verse 15, he says, he said to them, he, he said to them, Go in all the world and preach the good news to all creation. All right, who's he saying that to? The disciples, the disciples at that point. Who, who else does that refer to? Us. All right. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Well, there you go. That's the gospel, right? John 3, chapter 3. Those, those uh, people believe darkness rather than light. We, we see that for God came in, Christ came in the world to save the whole world, right? He, came, he didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the whole world. But people like darkness rather than light. Look at the end of John chapter 3. It tells you that. And so we know that some people are going to be condemned. Does God want people to be condemned? Yeah. No. Is God's plan, when he sent his son, was to redeem uh, just part of the United States. No, it was to it believe, it was to come to save the whole world. Every creature, every person, amen? Every human being, everyone, amen? And these signs, okay, oh, now Mark records something that, that, that Matthew didn't record. He records this part here. He says, and, those, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. Who's got demons chasing them? Who was that? Last week we talked about that, right? People, people, yeah. But you can cast them out. This is part of being a believer. You have authority. Because as a believer, not only that I'm saved from my sins, I'm a wretched, horrible person. Oh, thank God God saved me. But now he gives me some authority. Right? Not only am I a believer, I understand when people are new Christians, they have to, there's a maturing process. Have to understand these things. No, you can cast out that demon. I don't have to do it for you. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus, leave. And all of a sudden, peace comes over the household. I remember that was one of those days. You know, Pastor, come and pray over my house because there's demonic activity in my house. I have no problem going to the house without demonic activity. So there's no problem with that. I go in and it leaves. I leave and it comes back. I said, wait, something wrong here. <laughs> right? What's wrong? That person in the house has to have the authority. I mean, I can go in there and say, leave, demon. It leaves and it comes back. I mean, I have experiences, okay? So what happens? The person in the house, I have to teach them that you have that authority. Are you a believer in Jesus? Well, I'm kind of like a believer in Jesus. Well, no wonder you have demonic activity. You don't even believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Let's start there. Okay? Lead them to salvation. Because obviously they, they said, come to my house because they, there's something in you or in me. They say they want me to come. So I'll come. I have no problem going. But then when I leave, I say, well, then what's the problem? So, so listen, sir, ma'am, you need Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need to be baptized. You need to follow him. And when you do, you have a story, and there's peace will be stored in your household. Amen? So that's what it says here. These signs will follow them and believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit, too, in the next couple of weeks. They will pick up uh, snakes They will with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. What is going on here, right? They will place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. So any harm. We don't deal with a lot of witchcraft here, but you know, you go in countries that have witchcraft, this stuff is like real. So you say, well, you have authority over that. Sickness come on you, in the name of Jesus, sleep. Mm -hmm. Right? How many have been sick this week? Right? I mean, I told Tina, we had a great week. We weren't sick. 
we haven't been sick for a while, you know, praise the Lord. But now everybody that's under our leadership has been going through some stuff. It's kind of funny, not funny, but it just happens. Um, you know, Rajiv had an a, a eye infection and it went from one eye to the other eye, now it's better, absolutely was sick. Uh, uh, um, Angel's going through some stuff. And it seems like the leadership team. And then Rachel got all of a sudden, now, now Rachel goes through this thing. I was like, oh, this is just another attack on the family. You know, this is what we have to be aware of. That's why you have to pray for the leadership team. Look, in your prayers, in your daily prayers, would you pray for the leadership team of our church? Pray for Tina and I. I appreciate your prayers. I really do. Uh, pray for uh, Andy and Rachel. Pray for them. All right? Pray for uh, Rajiv and Hapsabah and uh, Angel and and uh, Dion and Ashley, pray for them. They, they're, they're taking more of a role in, in, in help behind the scenes. You guys don't know, you don't know yet, but they're doing more things. And uh, I really appreciate it. So I, I don't have to do this much. And that's kind of nice. Uh, it's just nice right now. So, and, and I like it. But in that comes some demonic activity. Well, they know it. They have authority over that. They know that. There's no, my guys all know that. But, you know, we just need your prayers, okay? Is that okay? Uh, just cover your prayers and cover for our leadership team. And, and we're actually uh, starting another, we're starting like a little uh, prayer team. Uh, just a couple of us. We're going to start getting together every Sunday and praying for this church service and praying for the leadership team. And uh, we're going to be studying through the Lord's Prayer. And uh, the first one, um, you know, I won't get too far off my sermon, but the first one is we're talking about when Jesus said, Our Father. It was the first time Jesus referred to God as the Father. It's amazing. So our Father gives us a mission now to do God's work. It's our Dad. He didn't say God up there, God that only He can go and pray to. Now He opened up the door for us through through the temple being uh, the, the 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 symbolic thing that happened at the temple where the curtain was ripped from top down. Bottom. Now we can go boldly into the throne of God. We can talk to Father God. And I'm getting asked My hands are getting so warm from that. To say that. Um, God wants us to lay hands on the sick. You, I was thinking about this when I was getting ready, and there was a guy next to me. I didn't pray for him. I got said, God, forgive me. But, you know, I just saw a sick person, and I just felt like I should pray for him, right? You ever do that? And then don't, and you feel like I do right now? Uh, it happened. But I think God wants us to do this, because what happens when you pray, lay hands on the sick and they recover? Who gets the glory for that? Well, and it was amazing. You prayed for me, and God healed my leg, and I'm all, man, you are such an amazing person. And Andy's going to go, no, I'm not. Let me tell you, I got a free gift. God gave me this free gift. I'm giving it to you. It's such an amazing thing. God loved me, and I just want to love you. I didn't deserve his love, and you probably don't either, but he loves you. And whatever you say after that, God will give you the words. His, through his spirit, he'll give you the words to say. Our mission is to lead people to Jesus, right? And, and go ahead. let's look at um, it was Mark. Look at Luke, Luke uh, twenty-four. Again, this is after the resurrection. Jesus appeared, and and then he he appeared to the apostles. And he said again. Look at kind of, um, first chapter twenty-four, verse thirty-six. It says. Uh, peace be with you, just like he said that was recorded in John. And then he goes down to verse 45 and says, Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. How many want to understand the scriptures? See, he gave the Spirit so we could understand. I'm going to get ahead of myself. But there's a reason. And then he said this This is what is written the Christ will suffer and raise from the dead on the third day, and the repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name. And all nations, everybody say all nations, all nations, beginning in Jerusalem, you are my, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send uh, you what the Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So you're going to preach the gospel through the whole world, as far as the world they knew, and they didn't know they're going to be spread all over the place. They didn't know persecution was going to allow them to go all over Jerusalem, all over the world, known world, to share this gospel. We see the message of the of hopes in every nation now. There's no nation, I don't think, I mean, I know some people say there's some people that don't have the, the languages or whatever, or Bible, but I think most of the world now knows about this message. Amen? And I think the whole world knows, and he says, you're going to do these things, and they're like, okay, um, we'll do it. But I think that when it said, in the part we read, that some doubted in, in Matthew, 
They were like, okay, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. But he, he opened up their minds, and then they understood this whole thing. It's this simple. This is what happened. This is the message. It, what do we share? That's why I tell people, I, I, like you, I like when people invite people to church. Invite them. That's fine. They'll come to church because some people like, you know, hey, I need to go to church on Sunday. That's fine. But you don't have to bring them to church, is what my message, that you share this message. Right? You can share this message. You have the power to do that. And I'll show you in just a minute how, how you have that power. You have the power to share that this is what you need to share with people. See, when I, I talked to my brother yesterday, I don't share. He wants to talk about all sorts of stuff. He wants to mock God. He wants to do all sorts of funny things. But you know what? I share with him this right here. That I, you have to recognize, my brother Sam, um, that Jesus is the Son of God. And he took away the sins of the world. Uh, and he wants to talk about church, he wants to talk about all of his bad experiences. I just tell him I'm sorry for that. The truth is you have to recognize Jesus is the Son of God. He won't do that. I don't know why he won't do that. He just won't do it. Fine, I'm going to continue to pray for my brother. He needs to recognize that Jesus This is the message that brings hope and life. There's no other message. Joining Capital City Church isn't getting you there. I mean, it's fun. We have a great team. We have a great uh, family. I love it. I love you guys. But you, I, it's Jesus. Amen? And now turn, turn back to John 20. I know we're just traveling a little bit through the Bible here because there's a reason for that. I wanted to see all this. John 20. Because then Jesus said to them, and then, and then, and when, and verse 22, and when that, and with that, he breathed on them and said, so he, gave, he said to them, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, he talked about it, it, it reaffirmed the peace was that you're already victors, you're already going to have, you're already winners, you're going to, so what Jesus said here, and when he said peace be with you, he's, the mission I'm going to give you, it's already accomplished. You're going to be victorious in this message, performing this message, getting this message out to the world. And he said, and, and, also, and, he, then he, and with this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So I think of two things. In Genesis, it tells us that God took the earth. It's so funny. It said, I read it this morning again. It says, God took the dust of the earth. He didn't even take dirt, he just took the dust of the dirt. And he put it all together and he made a person. A man. And then it says, after that, it's funny. He took just the dust of the earth, not the dirt. It's like whatever comes off dirt. So we're like nothing. Right? Or made out of nothing anyway. But we're, his, we're the apple of his eye. He took the dirt, he formed man, and then it says he breathed in him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. I truly believe what happened back then is when he breathed in him, the Spirit of God was in him, and he became a living soul. The Spirit of God was already a man. Right? It was in us. And then when, when, the, when the sin came, the Spirit left man. That's why they were so empty and fearful and they hid and they covered themselves and they hid from God because now the Spirit of God wasn't in them. And then Jesus died on the cross and now we see him breathing again on man, restoring to us his Spirit in us or in them. Because without the Spirit, we couldn't accomplish the mission that we have. They need it. And then when the Spirit was breathed on them, as it's recorded in the other book, uh, in, Matthew, in, um, in Mark, he, um, uh, Matthew, then when Revelation came, and all the knowledge of what he did came into their mind and heart. They knew everything that he said was true because the Spirit of God is not in them. And the Spirit of God is in you and me. Amen? The Spirit of God is in us. So he said... He said, and, and Genesis, and then, um, what was it? I was thinking, um, let me go back to here. It says, and he received, and he said, receive the whole, the, the Holy Spirit. And he said something that's so profound that just, I, I don't think I could, I don't think I fully can understand it. I'm going to explain it to you today. Look what he says next. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. He says, if you forgive anyone, this is the NIV version, we have other versions to look at. He says, if you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. Now, how powerful is that? 
This is where the Catholic Church comes up with the whole thing with confession. They got this little thing. Okay, I'm a priest. You go in this little booth. And then you tell the priest all your sins, and then you say you're repentant. I was a kid, grow up Catholic, you know what I'm talking about? And then you got to say, um, Hail Marys and Our Fathers, right? And then you say, I mean, I had sometimes 20 Our Fathers and 20 Hail Marys. I mean, um, uh, you know, I don't know how they came up with that number, but I was a, I was a bad kid that week. So, yeah. And if I didn't go for a couple weeks, I had a longer list, you know? So, and it's whatever. So, it's what it was. Is there a way of practicing and understanding forgiveness, I guess, and help people grow up in that? And be able to confess, because when we do confess our faults, and James says that, what happens? When we confess our faults one another, what happens? It says our sins are forgiven. So we have this time of, of, of letting. I believe that sin is, um, sin in a believer, it, or it's always, we don't want to confess it because we don't want people to know that we're weak or we make mistakes and the enemy says, oh, you're no good and he just messes with our head and all of a sudden the sin just stays in there and stays in there and holds root and then it never comes out. But as soon as we confess it to each other, there's healing and restoration happens. As soon as we start, hey, I have this problem, boom, whatever it is, I don't care how bad it is. Once you reveal it, the enemy can't mess with you anymore, you can get free from that and healing flows from you, amen? You know what I'm saying? Like when you have when you have unforgiveness towards a person, you hate that person, you can't stand that person, right? They they wrong you so much, and then you're just holding all this hatred inside you, inside you, and it's getting worse. And every time you even think of that person, you get you know just get you get emotionally drained, and, and people can tell you, Doctor, um, Doctor, soon that'd be Doctor, uh, Pastor Kim is teaching that or learning that in, in the, at the university here at UW on forgiveness, how it physically messes with your head and you can, your body will even deteriorate because of unforgiveness. And it's, it's just, it's kind of, it happens. So what happens, but the moment you say it, you get it out there. As soon as you say, I'm having a problem or I'm struggling in this area of my life or in my mind, I have this issue or whatever it is, it, all of a sudden now it's revealed, then the person, hopefully the person has compassion to share with you God's love and forgiveness and then they can be forgiven. And guess what happens? Once the sin is forgiven, is gone, right? In God's eyes, you're, it's clean. You're new, and all of a sudden, uh, the enemy will come. Oh, you didn't really. You you you're still that person. You're still that way. No, no, no. I, I ask for forgiveness here. I believe God forgave me. Enemy, get away. I'm not going to believe that lie. And that's what happens. You have power after this. Look at what he says here. When you receive the Holy Spirit, not only will you have power to do the mission that He told you to do, but you have power to forgive. I well, said, Well, do you have power to forgive? We can forgive sin, really. Jesus can, but we have power to show them how to go through that process. Then the other part kind of kind of boggled me a little bit because it says in NIV version, if you don't forgive them, they won't be forgiven. So I'm like, wait a second, all sin is forgivable, right? And when you look it up and you research just a little bit, you can use that blue letter Bible.org, you'll find out that if that person will not be released from that sin, you have no other obligation. You've done your part. You help that person lead them to forgiveness. You have that power. Amen? Do you have that power to have victory? Have your hand raised? Yes, because the Holy Spirit revealed to you. Amen? You also have power to help to, to forgive sin. That's what it says here. I don't know how any other way to interpret this, but that if we forgive people, isn't that one of the major things that we have trouble overcoming? You can overcome this sin of unforgiveness. Maybe we should end with that today. Know this, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is for us to accomplish the mission that God's given us. He's given us His Spirit. God sent His Son, Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. As we look at this a little bit further in the next few weeks, you'll find out the Holy Spirit is given to us on the day of Pentecost. It's a power that we have. It's an anointing that we have. It's a, a prayer language that we receive. It's, it's um, gifts that God uses us in go through 1 Corinthians, you'll see that those gifts were given by the Holy Spirit. How about the gift of giving? How about the gift of prophecy? How, there's so many gifts there. We're going to talk about those over the next few weeks, too. We want people to understand these were given so we can accomplish the mission that God gave us. And that's to preach the gospel throughout the world. And if you come across somebody that's sick, guess what? Lay hands on them. If you come across somebody that has unforgiveness in their soul, guess what? You have to answer. Because I've met these, I've met people that have been hurt. Especially people that have been hurt by the church. Uh, Christian people. Church. And something in them. How can God 
allow this to happen. You ever hear that? I don't know. But I know God can take all that hurt and pain away. Right? That's what I tell them. I said, I don't know how, and I'm sorry for what you're going through, but that hurt and that pain, you can't live with that. We're never designed, I was telling somebody just recently, you're never designed to carry that burden. You're never designed to hold that hatred inside you. You're never designed to do that. God wants to take that and release you from it. So everybody's been hurt by somebody. Come on. It was a family member or a church member or somebody else. Somebody hurt us. And also we still can't even think about that person in our mind. We get all anger and, and you know, fear and, and doubt and all that junk comes after us. And we just, mm, God, just go get them. You ever say that? Get them, God. No. God's already got them. God loves them more than we love them. They're in the palm of his hand. Just like he has you in the palm of his hand. That person, God wants to see come to restoration because everything that he's ever done or she's ever done has been forgiven through Jesus. So we have to be the catalyst to help that happen. Amen? That's a, it's such a powerful thing to forgive. Because in you, I don't know about you because I had to go through this myself. So I had to forgive and in me, in my heart, well, first of all, in my brain, housing group up here, we should call it in our military, a brain housing group. In here is all the things that ever happened to me. I never forget them. Okay? We never forget them. Whatever you've ever been through, you never forget it. But when God gives you peace and the forgiveness comes, then it's just it's there, but it's not, the hurt's not there. The, everything's there. When that, comes, that person comes up now, I can pray for them and pray for them seriously, not just going, oh God, do whatever you're going to do in their life. No, I mean, I can mean it. Because up here is change. Now all of a sudden my heart is like, there's no, my heart is softened. Instead of a heart of stone, I have a heart of flesh. My heart changes into, to the heart of God. I begin to love like God loves them. It's amazing. And it's the Spirit of God that just comes in and gives me the peace over that situation so I can just not live in fear and doubt and anger anymore. You know? It's, it's the Spirit of God that does that to us. We sing the Spirit of the Living God. Fall. I remember singing a song. Spirit of the Living God, fall fresh on me. No, he's already in me. I remember singing those songs, you know, I'm thinking, well, I've written the Bible. The Bible says the Holy Spirit was given. And if I believe and God poured the Spirit in me, and I had the Spirit in me, so now we're praying, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, we need you. I mean, the Holy Spirit stand and go, hey, I'm here already. Oh, just, just, just listen to me what I have to say. Amen? Remember that? I was like, oh, we said, come, Holy Spirit. We don't wait, right? We need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. I said, come in your strength and your power. See, we're here now. Say, come in your own special way. And I'm standing in church over here going, He wants to bring, he wants to give revelation to me of the word and what's happening in my life. He's, that's what the Spirit of God does. Oh, I, if I could give you a gift, like a, on a Christmas coming, how many like getting gifts? I love getting gifts. I, I do. I, I'm sorry, I was crazy about that. You know, we give each. We always say we're gonna, we're not gonna have to give us each other gifts. We're gonna spend money on the kids. Okay, but I always have to go get something. And Tina knows too, because I like gifts, so she'll give me something. Right? It's just. If there's a t-shirt wrapped up in a box, that's fine, you know? It's just something. Yeah. Um, it's what it is, I don't know. I like gifts. But I like, because I like this gift. I love the gift that the Holy Spirit has given to you and me. Because then my purpose as a Christian isn't just showing up on church on Sunday and doing a few activities throughout the year. My life is, as a Christian is constantly listening to the Holy Spirit, teaching me and guiding me and helping me through all aspects of life. Amen? Got a test coming up, right? The rest is in school, right? Got a final coming up. This is this is coming a few weeks, right? Oh God! So I think I read in the word somewhere that God will bring back to your remembrance everything you learn. I said that's cool. So I got a test, God. I'll just put it to the Bible. I said, I said, uh, um, all right, God, I got this test. Got to help me with it. Please help me with it. Not you, God, help me. That kind of change. You know, I'm learning. Please, Lord. And all of a sudden you remember something. You remember this answer. And God does that stuff. I, I think he cares about everything about your life. Yes. Amen. And the Holy Spirit does that for you. He cares about you. He wants you 
It's a wonderful gift that's for every one of us. So we have the Holy Spirit when you believe. It's the positive of our salvation, right? Right? Second Corinthians tells us that. He's a positive in us, a reassurance of our salvation. The Holy Spirit is in us. And then, He has this awesome gift that He wants to give you so you can accomplish the mission that we're supposed to be. Remember He said to the children, uh, uh, to the disciples, go in Jerusalem, and tarry there for a little while. How long? For about 50 days. And at the Feast of Pentecost, something cool is going to happen to you guys. Right? And it does. We're going to talk about that in the next couple weeks. Alright? We know that this, this gift is for you and for me and for everyone that's here. Amen? So how many, let's go back for just a moment. How many here would say, I would like to get rid of all my unforgiveness in my life? All my unforgiveness. Everything, huh? Yeah, I have unforgiveness in my heart, and I just want the Lord just to take it away. Come on. Right? Right? Now, we don't, this is what Andy said earlier, we're victorious. We, we already won over that. All right? Now we need, the, we need to be, hmm. So let me tell you the truth. Okay, let me just, can I do that? Let me just share what I have to you're responsible for that forgiveness. That's the truth, okay? I'm just, I was not going to say that, but I thought, well, no, I better say that. See, we, when the enemy comes in and give, you know, the, the, that person hurt us. They wronged us. It's their fault. And I remind them, when I go to the altar, I need to leave, I need to leave my gift at the altar. Don't give your offering. And go make it right with that person. <clears throat> You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? You don't know what they did to me. No, I don't. And I'm sorry for what happened. But the Word of God is the Word of God. I can't tell you anything different. So we're responsible for the unforgiveness. That's what it says here. So we have to forgive. And what happens when we forgive? First of all, when we release that, in a sense, we forgive them, even if they're not here right now, if we forgive them, then the peace that Jesus said will just fill our hearts. He'll start healing the wound of that, that situation. And they're released then to be forgiven. We're almost holding them back. There's a whole teaching on that we'll get into in January about that. How in your heart is, is this hurt that you have that the Father wants to release so you can be forgiven. That's what it says. So we have to forgive. It's kind of funny right here because he records it. John records it. John was a disciple that loved Jesus. He wrote the book of Revelation. John was sitting next to Jesus in, a, in if we say the Last Supper. John loved Jesus. He was part of the inner core. And he writes this. He, and the first thing he says in this chapter at the end of here is that we need to forgive. I mean, think about that. How important is that? Because, you know, I can't talk about forgiveness or show people forgiveness if I have hatred in my heart or unforgiveness in my heart, right? It's hard for me to tell people about the forgiveness of Jesus when I'm not, I have this thing in my heart. Jesus forgives everybody except you because I have this hatred toward you because of what you did to me. So am I truly forgiven then? By holding this back. Can't, I, I might not be able to forgive that person that offended me because in my own power and strength I can't, but with the Spirit of God I can. That's what's beautiful. He knows we have struggle. He knows it's hard for us to overcome that. But the re revelation of, of this word means that we have the power to forgive because God forgave us so we can forgive. Like Andy was saying, I love, God loved me so I'm going to give out a, a cup of hot chocolate. In, there's no reason I'm just giving out because God loved me. I want to love you. God forgave us. Everybody in this room, right? Come on, everybody in this room, God forgave us. And now we have to forgive others. So His forgiveness will flow through the world. We're a catalyst for that. We can't do it on our own, we need to forgive God. Forgive us. Let's just do this right now, don't. Okay. Let's everybody bow our heads for a second. I'm going to do it this way. When we're looking around, Right 
where you're at. The Holy Spirit's already dealt with you by, by the words that I spoke about forgive, unforgiveness and hatred and hurt. I saw it on your faces. I can see the hurt. Um, I see the pain. I don't know what your struggles are, but God does. And so today, to be able to complete the mission that the Holy Spirit has told us, what Jesus told his disciples to do, and what we have to do, we need to start there. We need to forgive ourselves. And the Holy Spirit is going to help us do that. He's revealed to you already, as I was speaking, those things and people that you need to forgive. And right where you're at, and I know this is painful, and I know it's not hard, this is not easy, but right where you're at, would you just ask God how to help you to forgive that person, or those persons, or whatever it is that is holding you back from releasing that, uh, that love and that grace that God gave you. You see every heart, Father God. You see every person. You see every hurt and pain and all, all the disappointments, all the, the tragedies that they had to live through. In the, just in this room, Father God, I just pray right now that your peace, just like Jesus said to his disciples in that room, Father God, I just pray that peace over this congregation right now. Father, peace, your peace, Father, put dwell in their hearts and minds. And as it says, we have the power to forgive. So, Father, I pray that right now, just where you're at, just ask the God to forgive you for that unforgiveness, that hurt. Forgive that person in Jesus' name. I forgive this person for how they hurt me in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me, Lord, for having unforgiveness towards them in my heart. In Jesus' name. Spirit, help us to say those words. Hallelujah. Just let the Holy Spirit open up your heart right now and let him just go in there and do surgery. Would you, could you imagine in your mind's eye that God, by his Spirit, is opening up your heart and he's going in there and now he's removing, he's even scraping away the unforgiveness. Taking it away, he's just melting, he's doing whatever he needs to do to go in there and just take it away in your heart, the most inner being, your most inner being right now. Let him do that, let the Holy Spirit do that. Don't let your mind wander, don't let the smoke, don't let the enemy come in and try to tell you something different right now. But when you just listen to my words, listen to my words, let the Holy Spirit come into your heart and just scrape away all the hurts, all the pain, all the all the fear. Everything that that person's caused you, or that situation caused you, just let him take it away. And I'll tell you what he's going to do in a minute. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Take away every pain, every discomfort, every unbelief, every uh, fear, Father, in the name of Jesus, every every hatred, Father. In Jesus' name, take that away, Lord. Father God, take the pain right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for doing that in every person's heart that needs it this morning. God, I thank you for that. Hallelujah. And just like a surgeon will sew back up your heart, uh, so a, surge, uh, a surgeon would uh, sew a wound together. He's sewing your heart back together. Would you just let him do that right now? You let him put that, would you let, let him just put your heart back together, put all, put all that stuff removed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Just let him, let him, let him finish sewing it all back together in your heart. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do in just a minute. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for touching every heart this morning. Thank you for removing the hurt and the pain and the unforgiveness. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you so much for, for, for changing my heart right now. And I'm telling you, he's going to feel that every void now, every void in that heart where those things were removed, God's going to replace it with his love. Would you receive his love this morning? Uh, yeah, you too. Would you receive his love? Would you receive his love? Uh, would you feel, let him feel that back up? Let him feel his spirit in you. Let him feel it, fill it up with his love and his kindness, his patience. Hallelujah. Self-control. Let him fill it up. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> all right. All right. Praise the Lord. 
if you feel his peace and you feel his love, I want you to stand. If you feel his peace and you feel his love, I just want you to stand. Hallelujah. Our glory to God. Just let me do this, all right? Let me do this. Let God, as you feel his love and his peace, I want you to stand. Hallelujah. Father, thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for touching your people, your children. I wish you could sit. That's okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Father, I love you. I love you, Lord. Come on, just switch just raise up your hand. Just tell them how much you love them this morning. Father, I love you. I love you for you. I love the peace that you give me when in our situation. I thank you, God, for forgiving me of my sins, and I thank you for forgiving the sins of the Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Peace. Peace. Peace to do what I've called you to do. Peace to be. Peace to have victory over every situation. Peace in our homes. Peace in our cars. Peace in our marriages. Peace over our children. Hallelujah. Peace over our finances. Peace, Father. Peace. Hallelujah. Peace in our mission, God. Our mission, our, mission, our life. Like I said in that uh, uh, definition, our life lot. What, what we're doing right now is not only what we do, day, but it's, it's to do what your will, Father God. Hallelujah. Peace. So Revelation says that they overcame the enemy by the testimony, by the words that they speak. By the testimony. Amen. They overcame the enemy by their testimony. Hallelujah. By their testimony. By their testimony. By the words that they speak. And it gave encouragement to, to, the, to everyone. The words of testimony. Reminded the enemy that they're defeated and remind ourselves that he is victorious, that we're victorious with him. Amen? We're victorious. Amen? How many, uh, Amen. come on, raise up your hands. How many winners, huh? How many victorious people do we have here? Hallelujah. Victorious in Jesus' name. In Jesus. I want to do uh, one more thing. We've been doing this at the end of our services for a while, and I kind of get 